be here with us this morning. If you want to turn to Exodus chapter 15, we'll be starting in verse 22, and the name of the sermon today is The God Who Heals. Amen? Amen. 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 So I know, and you don't have to raise your hands on this one, I know if I were to ask for a show of hands that everyone, and I would think that would be without exception, would raise their hand if I asked the question, have you ever experienced pain or suffering, whether physically, emotionally, or spiritually? And we're going to talk about healing today in all of those areas. You know, we serve a God that has many names in the Old Testament. And each one of those names describes a different aspect of his goodness. Jehovah Jireh means the Lord will provide. Jehovah Shalom means God is our peace. In today's reading in Exodus, the name Jehovah Rapha is referred to, which means the Lord who heals. Amen? So I would encourage you today, if you need a healing today, spiritually, physically, emotionally, and I, and I hope and I pray that the Holy Spirit will speak to you this morning. Amen? Amen. Okay. So if you remember, we've been in Exodus now for a while. And the story of Exodus, that last time we were in Exodus, we read about how the Lord had parted the waters of the Red Sea so the nation of Israel could cross over and be free from the Egyptians once and for all. Remember, God said you'll never see these enemies again. Now keep in mind that our story in Exodus 15 that we're starting with in verse 22 is just three days after that. So three days after that miraculous display of God's power in saving the nation of Israel, now we come to Exodus chapter 15, verse 22. So we're going to read 15, 22 to 24. Exodus chapter 15, 22 to 24. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Then they went into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Now when they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? Now, I understand they're thirsty here. You know, we live in, we live in a desert, too. And, and to go without water for three hours, let alone three days, that can, be, that can be hard, especially as hot as it gets here. So here in Las Vegas, you know, in fact, I know tourists who they are treated for dehydration because they don't understand how the dry heat can make them ill without consuming enough water. So we know in the desert how important water is for our bodies. So they get here, and they can't drink the water. So these people were thirsty, and then to top it off, they came to a water source, but their water was bitter and undrinkable. That's like adding insult to misery. But that didn't make it okay either to respond the way they did. They complained to Moses, which, by the way, they get pretty good at as the journey goes on here, but they had just seen God's miraculous parting of the Red Sea. Maybe they could have asked Moses to ask God for another miracle instead of complaining. And honestly, though, I was thinking about that. If that were me, and I don't know if it would be you, but if that were me, I'd be tempted to complain just like the children of Israel are doing here. Let's see what happens next in verse 25. So he, this is Moses, cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. When he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made a statute and an ordinance for them, and there he tested them. You know, I read somewhere that it was explained that certain trees and certain chemicals in their sap could draw the mineral content, blah, 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 blah. This is a miracle of God. There's nothing special about this tree. Just as Moses' staff had nothing physically to do with the parting of the Red Sea, this tree Moses throws into the water had no special power. This was the power of God being demonstrated again for the children of Israel. Amen. Amen. Let's go on. Let's read verses 26 and 27. So after this, excuse me, let's read 26 and 27 first. 26 and 27. And he said, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. Amen. Amen. Then they came to Elim where there were 12 wells of water and 70 palm trees, so they camped there by the waters. Isn't that cool? After all that, God brings them to this place. So after this troubling stop in Mara, God leads them to a paradise of palm trees and water. You know, we've got all these landscapes down here on the Strip. Probably nothing compared to this, but God led them to. But I want us to go back to verse 26 and really take a long, hard look at that and what we can apply from verse 26 in our lives today. Now remember, this specific promise was made to the children of Israel 
at this specific time and on this specific Exodus journey that they were on. But there are many rich promises that we can take away from this verse too. Amen. So let's read 26 again. It reads, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals. Amen. Amen. There's a lot for us there. God can heal us physically. He can heal us emotionally. He can heal us spiritually. So let's look at each one of those this morning. God can heal us physically. Rapha in Hebrew can also mean to make whole, to mend, to repair. God is the source of all healing, and he can miraculously, or through earthly means, like medicines and healthcare professionals, he can heal. The Bible does tell us that the wages of sin, and we're all sinners, is indeed death in Romans 6.23. But that same verse goes on to tell us that the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? Amen. And God can heal us emotionally or mentally. Dennis talks about that kind of healing all the time. And Dennis will be here to tell you that there are trained professionals in this area, and some medications may be recommended, but ultimately, like Dennis said, this healing comes from and through God. Psalm 34, 18 tells us that the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves those who are crushed in spirit. And think about this. Even Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar, in the book of Daniel, he realized that when his reason did return to him, it was God that healed his mind. Right. Amen. And God can help us heal spiritually. And I believe that that is the healing that by far is the most important. And that can have a direct effect on the other areas of healing that we just discussed. If we aren't healed spiritually, and that of course includes coming to Christ, we can never truly be healed. <coughs> and we know that from that 23rd verse in Romans 6, that if we do not receive the gift of Jesus, then spiritual death is what awaits us. Without spiritual healing, it'd be like going to the emergency room because you're bleeding to death, and all they do is take a little SpongeBob Band-Aid, put it on you, send you home. Probably with a big bill to go with it. Without spiritual healing, all of the other healings really add up to nothing. The story of the lame man. The story of the lame man in Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 16, is a great example of physical healing by God. But the real story is the man's spiritual healing that took place there. So let me read to you Acts chapter 3, 1 through 16. We'll have the verses on the screen, but just listen. It says, Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, Look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Now as the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's, greatly amazed. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us as though by our own power or godliness we have made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the holy and the just and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and killed the prince of life, whom God raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Amen. Amen. Yes. That physical healing that that man experienced can be traced back to the healing of his heart. His faith is what healed him, as Peter says in verse 16. And the most important healing that can take place in a person is that spiritual healing. 
And that healing is only possible through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to read another scripture from you or to you here. Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 through 5. Familiar verses to many of us. Isaiah 53, 4 through 5. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes... We are healed. Amen. What a comfort to know that God is Jehovah Rapha who can heal our bodies and our relationship with him. Let's go back to Exodus chapter 15. And let's go over verse 26 one more time here. So back to Exodus 15, 26. If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals. God is telling them that they are obedient to his voice, his commandments, his statutes, then he will keep the diseases or the plagues which are brought upon the Egyptians away from them. He says he is the Lord who heals. The promise of physical protection was for the children of Israel at this time. What I would like us to do is look at this promise in the context of spiritual healing. And the children of Israel, they needed that too. You know, the Israelite spiritual condition was being, it was being tossed back and forth. It's just been three days since they experienced that miracle. Three days ago, they're on the top of the world at the Red Sea crossing. They're singing God's praise. The first 21 verses of Exodus 15 are Moses and Miriam's song praising God that the children of Israel sang. It says, sing to the Lord for he has tried gloriously. Three days ago, they're doing that. But now they find themselves here at the bitter waters. And then by verse 24, they're complaining to Moses. Their spiritual condition was controlled by the circumstances that they found themselves in. Don't let your spiritual condition be controlled by your circumstances, no matter how good or how bad they are. God is still on the throne, whether you are on the mountaintop or you're in the valley of your circumstances. He's still on the throne. Amen? Amen. The key to staying above the circumstances and not being swayed in our spiritual condition, I believe, is found in those same instructions that God gave the children of Israel here. When we diligently seek and heed the voice of God, whether through his word or through prayer or that still small voice, we can be spiritually healed by Jehovah Rapha. And when we live according to God's principles and we learn to cast aside our worries, we can begin to go down that path of freedom to be free from those stresses and anxieties in our life. Now, I'm going to give a little spoiler here for the guys. If you're coming to the men's conference on Saturday or still thinking about coming, our speaker, Brad Garrett, he's going to be using the, the next script I'm going to read in his, in his presentation. And for all of us, when we are facing any of these issues we've been talking about today, emotionally, spiritual pain, physical pain, it's always good to seek out spiritual guidance if the issue is spiritual in nature, and it's always good to seek out Christian professionals in the area of emotional health as well. But let me read to you this, Matthew chapter 6, verses 31 to 33. Matthew 6, 31 to 33. Jesus speaking, Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So when we seek God first, and we heed his voice, and we try to obey his commands, then we can have that peace that surpasses all understandings in our lives and if you're not making notes on some of these verses, some of these verses are verses we need to go back and rely on when we're struggling. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, letting your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Those diseases of the Egyptians. In Exodus 15, verse 26, that's those plagues that affected the Egyptians, but not the children of Israel. 
Now, we can look at Egypt today as what we refer to as a type of the world. That is to say that Egypt and its ungodliness are very much like the world that we live in today. And just like the children of Israel were slaves in Egypt before their deliverance, we were all slaves to the sins of this world before we were saved. And just as God saved the Hebrew children from the destroyer because of the blood of the Passover lamb on the doorpost, God saves us from the penalty of sin, spiritual death by the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. He is the Lord that heals. Amen? Amen. Do you believe that this morning? Amen. 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 One more thing I'd like to mention about this healing from the Lord before we close. You know, just as we are spiritually healed by following the Lord's instructions in Exodus 15, 26, those same instructions will also benefit us emotionally and physically. When we are free from the stresses and anxieties in life, we will feel better emotionally and physically. When we even follow God's guidelines for taking care of our own physical bodies, we will feel better physically. God designed us. He made us. Who better to turn to in learning how to take care of ourselves? So we've talked a lot about healing today. We've talked about physical healing, emotional healing, spiritual healing. So I'd like to invite you here as we close in worship, if you need any healing in any of those areas, I'd invite you to come up and be prayed for over here by the cross as we close in worship. And I've been sitting here before too. I know it's like, oh, everyone's going to look, they're going to see it. Nobody cares. They are focused on Jesus Christ. And if anything, they're praying for their brother and sister who may be hurting. So if you feel led to come up and have someone pray for you, come on up here over by the cross. We'll do that as we close in worship. And sometimes... The things we struggle with, they are deeply rooted in spiritual warfare, and those things need to be addressed in prayer as well. So please, don't hesitate to come forward. If you need prayer in that area or for healing or any other issues in your life, and if you're unable to make it up here, just shoot up your hand and we'll come to you. Amen? Amen. James 5.14 tells us that if anyone is sick, let him or her call for the elders of the church to pray over them. And if this is you today, please... Take this opportunity. Come forward as we worship. In Exodus chapter 15, verse 27, the last verse we read today, after the Lord promised to heal them, where did he take them to? A place of refreshment. A place of refreshment at Elim among the palm trees and the sweet water. If you want to be at the place of those sweet waters and those palm trees this morning, come forward. You can experience that time of refreshment with the Lord today. And I'm not saying that if you have an issue you're struggling with, you're going to come today and you're going to walk out of your heels. Maybe you will. It's the Lord's will. Amen. But this is a start. Start by having someone pray for you. And take those concerns to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 44, 3 says, I will pour water on him who is thirsty. Jesus says in John 7, 37, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. If you need that refreshment this morning, please come forward. Be prayed over here. Amen. Let's pray and then we'll go into worship. Amen. Father God, we do thank you and praise you, Father. And all those names, Lord, of yours in the Old Testament, Lord, we appeal to you, Jehovah Rapha, today, Lord, to heal us. Heal us all, Lord. Heal us all, Lord, of what ails us, Lord. We know that it's sin in our lives, Lord, but Father, there's so much other things going on in, in people's lives, in their bodies, Lord, in their emotions, in their minds, Lord. So, Father, we just come to you this morning, Lord, as your children just like the children of Israel, Lord, and we are diligently seeking you right now, Lord. So please, Lord, meet us here, Lord. Have your Holy Spirit, Lord, meet us here, Lord. And as we need those prayers, Lord, as we need that healing, Lord, that Jehovah Rapha, Lord, you would make yourself known here in this room this morning. So, Father, we thank you, Lord. We love you. We lift up all these things, all these prayers and praises. In Jesus' precious name, 